Good morning everyone. Uh, those who are here in the building and those who are watching from home and welcome to our service for Gaudete Sunday um, which is rejoicing, it's a rejoicing Sunday. Um, I am absolutely rejoicing this morning um, to be back with you all. It's so lovely to see you all. <laughs> You are all very, very sweet. Um, I had a brilliant time on placement. It was absolutely wonderful. Um, but I have missed being here so much. So it's really lovely to see you all again this morning. Um, John will say more about this Sunday. He will say more about the third Sunday of Advent when we think about, uh, helpfully, John will tell us about John the Baptist, I would imagine, or all of the Johns this morning. So... I've got to also remember how things work because I've now got myself in wrong services. So if I start to say him in the wrong place, just wave at me and tell me that's not what we're doing. Um, but we will have a hymn. So we will stand to sing our first hymn, number 46, on Jordan's Bank. Would you please stand? <coughs> So let us pray. God our Father, you gave to Zechariah and Elizabeth in their old age a son called John. He grew up strong in spirit, prepared the people for the coming of the Lord, and baptised them in the Jordan to wash away their sins. Help us who have been baptised into Christ to be ready to welcome him into our hearts and to grow strong in faith by the power of the Spirit. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. 
Amen. And so we turn to our purple service booklets. And as we come together to worship, we say the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. If I may ask you to kneel or sit for our prayers of confession. When the Lord comes, he will bring light to the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Father eternal, giver, giver of light and grace, we have, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in, in what, what we have thought, thought in what, what we have, have said and done, done. Through, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have, we have wounded your love and, and marred your image in us. We are, we are sorry and ashamed and, and repent of all our sins. For, for the sake, sake of your Son, Son Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 sent your messenger to prepare the way before you. Grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peter will read our first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly. And rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strength of the weak hands, and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God, he will come with vengeance. With terrible recompense, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. 
for water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the Holy Way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No travel, traveller, not even fools, shall go astray. But thou shalt be there, no lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return, and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you. The psalm set for this morning is Psalm 146, verses 4 to 10, um, which you'll find on page 477 of your green book. We stand at the glory be to join in with the choir. Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. 
What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes. Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak and may we hear in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I quite like this time of year. Here we are, just two weeks away from Christmas Day. And of all these trees around us, doesn't it feel like Christmas? I'm expecting Rudolph to make an appearance at any time. <laughs> I also feel that Christmas is a time of reflection, a time of waiting, a time of anticipation and expectation and of hope. I'm pretty excited this, uh, this year, so much and so that I can hardly contain myself. <laughs> I'm expecting the most expensive, most luxurious Christmas present that I have ever had. I'm now looking over in Diane's direction, <laughs> and judging by the expression on her face, I think that my expectation may well be in doubt. <laughs> of course, there are also people that will have a different expectation this time of year, and it may not be one of presents, joy and happiness. We heard of it about John the Baptist last week. Today we will hear another side of him, a side that you may well be surprised about, or not. We begin today's Gospel reading with John. He is not in the happiest of places himself. He is in prison and has been for some time. We heard John being very direct to some of those who were in authority last week. He was not out to make friends, he was telling it as it was. And it's because of this straight talking that Herod Antipas, the son of Herod the Great, had John put in prison. But John's main priority was to prepare the way for the Lord, to lead the way to the Messiah. So why did John send his disciples to Jesus to ask him if he is the Messiah? Perhaps John was expecting a David-like leader, a warrior-type king. He'd been preparing the people for a Messiah that was going to sort things out, to separate the good from the bad. Perhaps John's hope was that the Messiah was going to overthrow the occupying forces of the Romans and even rescue John himself. If that's true, in the harsh and depressing surroundings of Herod's prison, we find John baffled and quite understandably surprised at what, how Jesus was behaving. Jesus was talking about loving our enemies, caring for one another, and he seemed to be making friends with both those that were seen good and those that were deemed bad. Perhaps John was wondering if he might have been mistaken in thinking Jesus was the promised Messiah. Hands are cold. 
I wonder if we have our own expectations of what we think Jesus, or God if you like, should be doing in our lives. I know I do. I'd like to share with you a piece of writing that I've found about expectations and God. The thing about expectations is that they pull us out of the present moment into a future we do not yet have, except as it exists in our mind. Pretty soon we begin to act and speak as if our expectations, either of hope or dread, are the reality of our lives. We allow those expectations to shape our attitudes, our beliefs, and the way we relate to others. Those expectations even shape our image of who God is, where God can show up, and how God should act. If God does not meet our expectations, we are often too quick to question God rather than ourselves. We trust our expectations of what God should be doing more than what we trust of what God is actually doing. This piece of writing certainly helped me to try and think differently about how my expectations may shape up. We sometimes find God working through the most unlikely of people and places, and even circumstances, where it would be easier just to dismiss his presence because it's not where we were expecting to find him. We'll never know if John's expectations of what the Messiah would be like was behind the question he sends out to the disciples to ask. But whatever the case, Jesus sets his mind at rest. He quotes from Isaiah, which John would have been well versed in, and tells the disciples to say to him what they hear and see, that the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. Jesus explains to John's disciples what he was actually doing and not what John might have been expecting him to do. The evidence was there for all to see. Perhaps we may have to ask ourselves what can we see? Or are we also missing the evidence? Are we looking for something else? Jesus then finishes talking to the disciples and says, Blessed is anyone who takes no offence at me. Perhaps Jesus is saying, don't give up on him, especially if he doesn't immediately meet with our expectations. As the year draws to a close, and the nights are getting longer and definitely colder, many of us may find that fear and doubt come creeping in even as we prepare to celebrate Christmas. This time of year can also be difficult for some people in many ways, especially given the cost of living crisis. So perhaps we may be forgiven if we find it hard to sing joy to the world. But perhaps we can also take some encouragement from imagining John questioning his own expectations are made that little bit easier to understand. Amen.
as you are able, would you please stand for the creed? So let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be able to sit for our prayers of intercessions as Hannah leads us. Watchful at all times, let us pray for strength before our Maker and Redeemer. We pray that God may bring in his kingdom with justice and with mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that God may establish among the nations his scepter of righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that we may seek Christ in scripture and recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. We pray that God may bind up the brokenhearted, restore the sick, praying particularly for Simeon Patel and his family, James Bowerman, Margaret Bowerman, Christopher Morris, Jeff Kingsley Mills, George Radcliffe, Audrey Clark, and those others who we now bring before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the light of God's coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and the shadow of death, remembering those who have died recently, particularly Ina Kite, and those others who we bring before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. We pray that with all the saints in light, we may shine forth as lights for the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. In a moment's quiet, we bring our own prayers to God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand for the peace? May the God of peace make you completely holy ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. We will sing number 36, Hark the Glad Sound.
as the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and singing. These gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood for the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this and serve you, people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St Andrew and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for these heavenly gifts. Kindle in us the fire of your Spirit, that when your Christ comes again, we may shine as lights before his face, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. the bands of marriage between Randall, John, Francis, Hockey of the parish of St Peter and St Mary Magdalene, Fordham, and Jade Olivia Sorby of the parish of St Andrew, Soil. This is the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. So let's pray for them. Lord God, we pray for Randall and Jade as they prepare to come together in marriage. Pray for their families and their friends who will support them for the organisation and planning to come. And we give thanks for the joy of their love. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Some notices. Hello, hello. Oh, hang on. I don't know what I've done here. Sort myself out. I tell you what, it's not good, is it? Um, <laughs> some notices. Uh, the first is just huge thank yous. Um, so brace yourselves for lots of very effusive thank yous. Um, thank you if you have decorated a tree, if you have organised a tree, if you have come and stood in the cold and been jolly made cakes, served cakes, made tea, everything else. And if you came yesterday and had a stall or stewarded or organised, thank you so much. The Christmas Tree Festival has been just an absolute joy. It is every year, I know, but it's just been a joy. The kids who have come in, um, the preschools and, and schools and things who've come in on the mornings have just loved it. A little tiny, I must have been four, I think, probably, um, walked in on Wednesday or Thursday morning and just went, ah, it's magic! So, like, if that's not enough to tell you that this is completely worth it, then, you know, so thank you very, very, very much. Um, it's much appreciated. More thank yous. Go to, I tell you what, we can do you last in the thank yous. Thank you to those who came last night. Um, we had a brilliant time, didn't we? Wave at me if you were there. Yeah, it was marvellous. We had a little boogie and everything. It was absolutely brilliant. So thank you if you came last night and thank you if you donated. Um, Bridget came to find me and told me that the tally at the moment, though I am sure they would be happy to take more money from all of us, um, was £907.82. So a big round of applause there, I think. Um, could you remind me of the three charities? Yeah, so the three charities were, the first one was the Church Roof, of course, <laughs> which um, hopefully one day will we'll be sorted, but um, the second charity was the Ukrainian refugees, and this is for um, all sorts, from um, the medical supplies to rehousing, and the third charity was our blessed 
Adam Brooks Oncology. So thank you very much. Um, much appreciated, not least because I got dripped on while I was giving communion. So um, the roof fund indeed. And obviously the biggest thank you of the evening. The biggest thank you, the biggest thank you, of course, goes not just to Tony, but we'll start with Tony. Tony, you were, there are no words, I don't think. You were marvellous. Thank you so much. We need a huge round of applause for Tony. It was just incredible. Just wonderful. Um, but also, as Eleanor said last night, behind every Tony, there is a Bridget. Um, and this Bridget is an utterly marvellous one as well. Bridget, thank you for all you did to organise everybody and organise wine and even hot sausage rolls that appeared minutes ago. She was very excited. So another round of applause, I think, for Bridget of their Thank you very much. Have I missed anyone in thank yous? The children, yes, oh, very welcome. Thank you, Susan. The children, uh, so there were some year fives and year sixes from St Andrew's Primary School. And honestly, I mean, I don't know whether it's the hormones, but um, I was really kind of, I was very moved by how beautifully they sang. Weren't they amazing? And there wasn't a huge number of them, but you could hear them so beautifully and so clearly. So thank you um, to those children and to um, Melody Bell, who rehearsed and organised them at St Andrew's School. They were, they were just wonderful. Um, thank you very much. And thank you, Susan, for mentioning that. Uh, angels. Angels, angels. Speaking of angels of the, the small children who sang onto knitted angels, if you could, on your way out, grab a few. There is a box. Oh, that Eleanor is about to wield and wave at us. Look at that while she's wrapped in that. That is brilliant, doesn't it? <laughs> Our very own angel is wielding angels. Look at that. Um, if you could grab some angels on your way out and pop them around about where you live in different places, they've got their little labels that advertise um, the community carols. So if, if, if everybody can grab a few um, and just pop them around where you are, on Wednesday, the box will be refilled because we will be undecorating the tree that's got more angels on. So keep your eye out post Wednesday as well, if you wouldn't mind, and pop some angels around where you live. Please do not put yourself out. It is icy and cold, so do be careful as you're putting angels around. But if we all take a few, then no one has to walk some miles. Um, thank you. This afternoon, for the staffing of the um, Christmas tree festival, we have some gaps. We now have a gap between 11.30 and 12.30, and between 1 and 2. If you could be somebody who would be happy to staff our Christmas tree festival in those slots, please could you sign up um, at the back at the end of the service. Worst comes to worst, we can put a sign on that's a sort of gone to lunch. Um, sign, so don't worry, but if, if there's somebody who is able um, to staff between 11.30 and 12.30 and 1 and 2, that would be much appreciated. Um, fantastic. This afternoon, 4pm, Sue is hosting a, a reflective advent service. Is that right? I've got the right day, haven't I? Yeah, he's nodding. That's all right. I tell you, because I, I went away for six weeks, everything fell on my head, and now I've got to remember what day everything is happening on. This afternoon, Sue will be leading a reflective Advent service at 4 p.m. in church, which will be, I'm sure, absolutely lovely. So don't miss that. What am I forgetting to say? I'm looking at the box. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. Just to say with the knitted angels, they can go out any time this week because community carols isn't till a week tomorrow, so you have to slip and slide. Um, yeah, so any time this week, thank you. Apart from that, I think I can go on sabbatical, can't I? At least till the 26th of February. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just have no words. This is such a good look. <laughs>
I'll tell you what, it's good to be back. Um, <laughs> before we come to our final thing, does anyone have a birthday that they would like to own up to? Wave at me. Silence. Oh, oh yes, of course, and then I saw to John. It's okay, it's not my birthday. <laughs> I'm just making sure, in case no one's heard, that we've got carol singing uh, this week on Monday and Thursday. Uh, Fairhaven at half past six will be singing outside because it's going to be dry, but it will be cold to wrap up warm. There will be hot drinks and mince pies, I'll be promised afterwards. And on Thursday, half past six at Soham Lodge, we'll be inside carol singing. You will need a lateral flow test. But afterwards, they've promised us with cheese and wine, and also bring, they're doing their Christmas draw, and there's loads of nice prizes. So hopefully, we'll have a good choir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any more for any more? Nope, there we are. Um, we're going to sing, aren't we? That's what happens now. We are indeed, yes. Um, we're going to sing hymn number 30, Come, thou long expected Jesus, would you please stand? <coughs> God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and all whom you love, this day and forever. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, go in love to serve the Lord. Thank you. Amen. 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 